Hello everybody and welcome back. So DaVinci Resolve 19 is out as you probably heard and as with any new version update Blackmagic has packed a bunch of new great features for us. Since there are so many updates, especially for live productions, we got a big amount of new features for both the cut and the edit pages. Fairlight also have lots of new tools and of course we have some new exciting things happening on the color page. There are just so many new features that I'm going to have to break them up into individual videos or else this will be too long and superficial. So instead, I, being a colorist, it will come as no surprise maybe that I will focus on what's new in the color page. Just remember, this is a beta version, so be sure, please, please, please back up your database first. I have a quick video on how you can do that up here. Also, if you're in the middle of a project, maybe wait until that's done and delivered. Just saying. Another thing to keep in mind, while you can open all your previous projects you've created in version 19, any new projects you create here in 19 will not be backwards compatible if you should ever need to go back. So just keep that in mind. Let's get back to business and jump straight into Resolve. And let's start here on the color page in the middle tab here next to the curves tool you have new color slice option color slice is a fixed vector grading tool so what black magic has done here is they've expanded on the six vector presets which has always been available up here under color presets where you got some fixed vectors you got green yellow red magenta blue cyan and additionally up here you would have some chroma adjustments that you don't have down here and maybe that's why they call it color slice. So you have the six, six vectors and additionally you have this great great option. You have a skin vector. This is the first time we'll see that in DaVinci Resolve and if you have a mini and advanced panel it will also be supported so you can use the knobs on your mini or advanced panels to dial it in. But let's go through what it is and what it does. So on the top here, you have a range of global controls that will change the values of the entire image. So for example, you can see here density. This will adjust the luminance of the image. So something like this, you can bring it down a little bit. This is some drone videos I shot from the, not this one, this is a stock footage from Faroe Islands, an amazing place to fly. But Density will adjust the luminance globally. Density depth will control how much the luminance is affected in the brighter areas. So if your density is set to zero, this will have no effect. So you will need to have done some density adjustments, something like this. So bring the luminance down and maybe you wanna raise it a little bit in the brighter areas. So that's what density depth affects. Saturation tool here. This will adjust the saturation, but it will be using a subtractive color model. So this prevents the colors when you add saturation from being too bright. So this is unlike what, how the saturation tool and the color wheels works. That will increase luminance as well, but this one will try to prevent colors from being too bright, too bright when you add saturation. So let's pump that up, up a little bit. And then you got the balance where you can set the luminance balance in the medium saturated levels. So we can bring that down a little bit like so. And finally, you have saturation depth. This will control the saturation in the brighter areas of the image. So you can bring that up and down as you wish, something like this. And at the end here, you have the option to swing the hue, just like any regular hue adjustment. And on the top right corner, you have a reset button. So let's add some density globally here and a little bit of depth and a little bit of saturation, something like that. So that's a good starting point. Now, the vector slices each has a highlight button that you can see here. Click that and you can see what is being affected. You have the name and you have the reset button. And below that you have the actual vector slice or a, an indicator of what is being 
adjusted. So you can see the red line here is the red vector. So we haven't changed anything. So it sits exactly on the red line. And the little triangle area here shows what's being affected with this slice. So if you click the highlight button, you can see what's being affected. And I don't know, it must be a bug because you can't lock it and then go down and change because below you have the center slider. And this is the only way you can adjust the, qualif the qualifying range. And um, so you can select how much is being qualified, but you need to actually go up to the original highlight tool, leave that on, and then you can select what is being affected. Let's just reset that and let's try to move to a blue here and let's see if we can clean it up a little bit in the water, something like this. There you go. And then you can turn the highlight tool off. And then you have the option to change the use of the colors inside this vector slice. So you can make the water, water use change with something like this. And then the fun part. Down here below you have a density slider to the left. This is the density slider and you have the saturation slider. And how they work is that the density slider actually adjusts the density of the colors inside the vector space slice by adjusting the luminance of the more saturated colors, just trying to emulate a subtractive um, color film process. So this is something that's often done on film or associated with films. and. Oftentimes when people use the often misinterpreted and overused word, word cinematic, this is one of the things that is associated with that deep, dense, thick colors. And this is what you can get now. So as you adjust the density, let me just swing the U a little bit there. So you can adjust the density of the water like so. So you can adjust the luminance here, bring it down, up, or you can actually use the slider down here, uh, the, use your cursor to go left and right, something like this. And you can adjust the saturation up here, like so. So quick and easy way to adjust a, an over, or make an over adjustment to um, a color, and it's very organic, so it's a great way of doing your first pass with your colors. Let's try it on this one and let's try the skin. So here we have the skin and I see obviously her, her jacket is and her hair is very much close to the skin, but let's focus on the skin. So qualifying here and let's zoom in a little bit like so and see if we can clean it up and make it a little bit better. Something like this is maybe not bad. We're gonna have to live with her jacket. It's being affected as well. So we can change the hue of her skin if we want to. Not really something I wanna do in this one. Let's bring up the density a little bit. Let's zoom out, get a better overall view something like this and we can add a little more saturation maybe just a tad so let's go full screen off on off on so you can see it adds saturation that's actually a lot of saturation in here but it just doesn't feel as as bright it doesn't maybe it doesn't feel as video like as you often see, it feels a lot more, yeah, it's, it's a lot more pleasing. I think that's why this, there's a lot of, lots of other ways by using HSV and HSL nodes uh, to, to, to try to do the same things here. So this is something a lot of professional colorists always tries to emulate because it's just a lot more pleasing way of ad adding saturation. And now Blackmagic has just made this easily available and usable for, for everybody. But 
Understanding how this works is obviously a great part of the process. Let's check the head. That looks good. Just give it a little notch. Using the panel is much easier. You have to be very careful with this. Of course, you don't want to overdo it. Maybe I want to bring out saturation of the head a little bit. Something like this. That's great. All right, let's move on to another clip here. So this guy here, what a character. <laughs> let's see, let's reset everything here. Color slice. All right, let me show you. So see the feathers up here. So that would be terrible to have to do a qualification on that. So instead now we just go to the yellow slice here. We have to go back up. If anybody finds a way to have this enabled permanently highlight down here in the slice, please let me know in the comments because it's quite annoying to have to go up here. It is a beta version, so it'll probably be fixed. Uh, but anyways, let's see if we can zoom in on his feathers up here and get a little bit better selection. There, something like this, it's still not affecting his skin. So I'm gonna turn the highlight node off. And maybe a little more dense. You can, of course, also make it less dense, brighten it up a little bit, but something like this, and then pump the saturation a little bit, something like this. So interesting here, if you look at the vector scope over here, if you look at the yellow as I turn it off, no, sorry, off and on, off, look how fat, the yellow um, area here is becoming when I turn it on. And look at the, I, it still respects the luminum, luminance levels. Even if I pump it up a bit more like so, you see the luminance is not really being affected, but you get a much deeper and fatter yellow down here. So the whole yellow just expands. And you can see that up here in the feathers as well. So let's zoom out a little bit. Look at also, I really like what it's doing here on this side of his shoulder here. Off, on, off, on. It looks really nice. And then let's try to do the same with the, let's take the this guy here. This guy is a great example. So we could maybe eliminate a little bit from his uniform here and still get the whole sky. Maybe something like this is a little bit better. Turn the highlight mode off. So we could swing the U of the sky. If we wanted more teal, could do that. And then we could add some density to the sky. And we could add a little bit of saturation as well. Something like this, so before and after. And look how it even affects up here and the feathers up here. Since it's organic like this, it's so easy just to copy paste this note to, to similar um, clips in, in the scene. So quick and easy way instead of starting to do qualifiers. So there you have it, the color slice tool. I hope you like this. I'll be back with new videos on the new features, other new features in DaVinci Resolve 19. If you like this, please consider subscribing, maybe hitting that like button. It really helps us get out there. So catch you on the next one.